my name is Chloe, welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you my October and November book haul. I haven't counted how many books I've got, one second. I think I have 17 books here, so that is pretty tame for two months. What I was doing was trying to limit my book buying by only buying, like combining the book haul, and I thought that it would be more daunting if I had a big book haul. My brain doesn't work this way. It didn't really work. I still have a lot of books, um, but a few of these were actually gifts or um, book boxes, things like that. So I'm not mad, actually. I think I've done really, really well. So what are we doing over December and January? I'm not going to be purchasing any books for myself. I'll make a slight exception if I do happen to go into a town and go into a charity shop. I'm not going to limit myself if there's something I really want, but I'm also not going to be seeking those opportunities <laughs> um, because of Christmas and then my birthday is in January. So I'm going to limit my book buying, hopefully. And it also doesn't count if I get book, like a voucher to buy a book for Christmas or my birthday. That doesn't count as book buying. It's the same as getting as a gift. So yeah, let's just start with the books I've got. I am just going to do them in the order that I received them. Um, starting off the first one in October was my book from the Reposed book box which is Lamp Producer by Stephen Price um, this is definitely the one I am least excited for in this haul I think this was this one is going to take a little bit of prompting so if there is anybody out there that would like to buddy read this one I am definitely up for it so this is about um we're in Sicily in the 1950s, still haunted by the memories of fascism and the war. The last prince of lamp producer, Giuseppe Tomasi, hope I said that right, struggles to complete his only novel, The Leopard. Tomasi is a veteran of the previous war, while his wife, Alessandra, is living in exile after her native Latvia is absorbed into the Soviet Union. The childless couple are survivors of a vanishing world of European aristocracy, living in the present yet nostalgic for the decadent past. Diagnosed with advanced emphysema and with a profound awareness of his doomed lineage, the prince begins working on a novel. When The Leopard is posthumously published, it is to much acclaim it will come to be considered the greatest Italian novel of the century. So it definitely sounds interesting, but I don't think I personally have the motivation to pick this up by myself and read the whole thing. So if anyone would like to buddy read, definitely let me know. Next, I had a lovely gift from Sue, who I will link in the description. I'll link her Twitter so that you can find her. Um, Girl in a Bad Place by Caitlin Ward. This was a book I was really interested in and Sue was aware. So she sent me a copy from Amazon because she is the sweetest. This is about um, Maylee and Kara. Um, who are best friends and they go to visit this place called the Haven um, which I think it's pretty obvious to the reader is a cult um, and it's all about them accidentally getting involved with a cult it was really interesting I have already read this I read this pretty much instantly when I received it um, it wasn't the best book I've ever read there were definitely a lot of missed opportunities here to um, make this amazing it was very short and I feel like an extra 100 pages would have definitely benefited the story um but I did enjoy it I think I gave it three stars um I could be wrong I'll pop on the screen somewhere what I rated it um it was fine but I have already read it and I'm going to unhaul it but in the purposes of the haul you haven't seen it yet so here it is next I did buy a couple of books off somebody on Facebook because there's always good deals um the first one is The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken I cannot believe how perfect condition this is in I don't actually know much about this apart from the fact it's a bit chunky um and I've had it on my wish list for so long there must have been a reason in the first place so with this is about Ruby who is 16 um, a mysterious disease has killed most of America's children. Ruby might have survived, but she and the others have emerged with something far worse than a virus. Frightening abilities they cannot control. Pressured by the government, Ruby's parents send her to Thurmond, a brutal state rehabilitation camp where she has learned to suppress her new power. Well, what if mastering it is a whole generation's only chance for survival? So I believe this is the first, well, it is the first, but I think it's in a series of four. Um, and yeah, I have heard so many things. I can't tell you what I've heard. It's been on my wish list a long time. And when I saw it on Facebook, I jumped on it. Another book I got by that same person on Facebook is The Way You Make Me Feel by Maureen Gu. Um, I've heard a lot about Maureen Goo's writing. It's just like feel good contemporary. Um, this one is about Clara Shin, um, who's 16, doesn't take life too seriously, but when she pushes one joke too far, her dad sentences her to a summer working on the food truck, the Cobra. Clara was supposed to go on vacation to Tulum, Tulum, 
um, to visit her social media influencer mom. She was supposed to spend lazy days at the pool with her buddies, being stuck up in a sweaty, being stuck in a sweaty Korean Brazilian food truck all day every day. Worse still, working alongside her nemesis Rose Carver, not the carefree summer Clara had imagined. Um, I'm not going to keep reading the back because I think I can see where that's going already. It says, love has a way of finding you. I am very excited to read this. I don't know why I haven't picked it up immediately. Next, I have a book that, bit of a spoiler for later on videos, we have already picked for um, the next couple months of Sisters approximately. That is Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman. Um, the only thing I've read of Neil Schusterman's, I believe, is Scythe. So I am very intrigued to see where this one goes. Um, is Jared his son or am I making that up? I'm not sure. Um, this is about, we've got, everyone's going to remember where they were when the taps ran dry. The drought or the tap out as everyone calls it has been going on for a while. Life has become an endless list of do's and don'ts. Don't water the lawn, don't take long showers, don't panic. But now there is no water left at all. Suddenly, Alyssa's quiet suburban street spirals into a war zone of desperation and violence. When her parents go missing, she and her younger brother must team up with an unlikely group in search of water. Each of them will need each of them will need to make impossible choices to survive. This just sounded really interesting. I've seen a few people talk about it. Maybe Chelsea from Chelsea Darling Reads, that might have been where I first heard about it. Um, but yeah, it sounded interesting. And when somebody's selling an interesting book on Facebook, you buy it. <laughs> Um, next, I have a book that I popped on my wish list myself and then bought it for myself, and that is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. So, um, Riley Sager, I have recently read Final Girls and Last Time I Lied. Final Girls, I gave five stars. Last Time I Lied, I think I gave four stars. So, I have really, really high expectations. Um, this is no visitors, no night spent away from the apartment, no disturbing the other residents. These are the only rules for Ju Jules Larson's new job as apartment sitter at the Bartholomew, one of Manhattan's most high profile buildings and home to the rich and famous. Recently heartbroken and practically homeless, Jules readily accepts the terms. When a neighbour confides the Bartholomew's dark history, Jules brushes it off as harmless ghost stories. But the next day, her new friend has vanished. And then Jules discovers that her friend is not the first resident to go missing. This sounds amazing. Riley Sager's thriller writing really, really gets to me. So I feel like this is going to be a very good time and I'm very excited. Next, a completely different pace to that, we have The Story of Babushka by Catherine Flores. So I actually got this through the Facebook group I'm in. Um, this is a children's story about Russian nesting dolls and um, Babushka is one of the characters and it's about like the different parts of her personality. You can never, the meaning of life. <laughs> Look, it's so gorgeous. Um, I haven't actually read this yet because that's probably about the amount of writing that's on a page. So, you know, it's not gonna take me too long at all, but I feel like I'm gonna save this for when I really need a quick read, like a quick, enjoyable read. Um, it's just, look at the little fox, it's so cute. It says, Babushka decides she wants to find out the meaning of life, so she sends her bodies out of the forest and into the world to search for answers. But there is a hurdle to overcome before all of the bodies can reunite and return to the forest together. It sounds so, so sweet, and I'm going to save this for a definite, like, pick-me-up read. Next, I have Brittany's favourite book of 2020, and that is The Secret History by Donna's Hart. I said I was going to look out for this and buy it when it was really cheap, and I actually found this on the BookSwap website I am in, so it cost me £3.50 for delivery, but that was it. So I love that. It's perfect condition. Um, I don't even think it's ever been read, if I'm honest. This I am not looking into. I'm going in completely blind. All I know is it is dark academia and, like, heavy. That's all I know. And I'm fine with that. And I don't want to know anymore. Okay, we're on the second stack of books. The first one, also from that BookSwap website, is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I have this on my December TBR, so I'm not going to talk too much about it because I think I talked about it quite a lot in that video. Um, we've got two characters in here, Camino and Yahira. Yahira? Yahira? I'm sorry if I've pronounced any of those wrong. I will definitely look into that before I give a review of this book. Um, who are sort of half sisters that don't know they're half sisters. Um, I'm the child her father left her for in the summers. Well, she is the child of my father left me for my entire life. 
Um, it is written in verse. I feel like it's going to be a very, very quick read um, and I can't wait to finally get to it because I've heard amazing things. Next, we have Perfectly Preventable Deaths by Deirdre Sullivan. This was sent to me by the lovely Mal from a book fiend named Mal for winning her giveaway. She said, um, I love this book. I really hope you do too. And the only reason it was added to my wish list was because Mal had talked about it and raved about it so much. So... Uh, this is about 16 year old twins Maddie and Caitlin have moved to ba uh, Ballyfran, an isolated peculiar town in the mountains. Mount mountains, wow I've been talking for too long. A place where for generations teenage girls have gone missing. Caitlin has always been the confident one and Maddie is used to being in her shadow but in Ballyfran their paths divide as Caitlin falls in love and Maddie begins to discover new powers she never knew she had. Maddie will have to find something hidden deep within her if she's going to present present prevent her sister losing more than her heart to this strange town but there's no compass for the human heart and what feels right might be dangerous more dangerous than either sister realizes um this sounds amazing i've heard such great things and that cover is absolutely gorgeous um so yeah thank you mal for this one then we have a little treat I gave myself and that is These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This is another one that's been on my wish list a very, very long time and it's only there because Hayley from Hayley and Bookland, who um, was the biggest YouTuber I started watching when I started my channel, she raved about it so I added it and it's it was still there so I treated myself to it. Um, this is, I'm not going to look into it, this is a romance heavy sci-fi book. Um, all I want to know and I'm going to go into it with just that in mind. I'm in no rush to get to it. It's taken me long enough to get my hands on it, but I now own it. Now I have one that um, was recommended by Heather from Bookables. Uh, she raves about a lot of YA contemporary and this one just really like struck a, what's the word? Like I wanted it. She mentioned it. I thought it sounded cool. Um, and that is You'll Miss Me When I'm Gone by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Uh, this sounds so great. Again, another one in perfect condition. Both of these were bought secondhand and they are perfect. 18 year old twins, Adina and Tova, have little in common besides their ambitious nature. Viola, Viola, you know, the violin thing. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, prodigy Adina yearns to become a soloist and to convince her music teacher she wants, he wants that her the way she wants him. Overachiever Tova awaits her acceptance to jo John Hopkins, the first step on her path toward med school and career as a surgeon. But one thing that could wreck their perfectly planned futures, a genetic test for Huntington's, a rare degenerative, degenerative disease that slowly steals control of the body and the mind. Okay, I'm gonna stop reading. That is why I wanted this book, I do remember. Um, I personally um, know somebody that um, had Huntington's and did um, pass away from it. So when um, Heather mentioned Huntington's, I definitely wanted um, to pick up this book because I know that the the daughter and the granddaughters of this lady that I know that has passed away, they are not doing the genetic test for Huntington's. So I think it's gonna be really, really hard hitting. I can sort of see where this is going. Um, but yeah, like I'm weirdly choked up even talking about it and that is why I wanted to pick up this book. Next, we have another gift from the lovely Sue. She's been great to me this month. She gave me Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. Um, this, I don't know where to start with this book. This is one of the weirdest books I've read this year. Um, I have already read it. I gave it three and a half stars and I'm going to be holding on to it because the atmosphere was amazing. Um, it, the back just says, you're in the house and the house is in the woods. You're in the house and the house is in you. Very strange. Catherine House is sort of a boarding school college thing where you are completely cut off from the world you have no contact with the outside world and you are not really allowed to think about the outside world um and that's really all i can explain it was a it was an odd one it was really really good the atmosphere was amazing the story just didn't really sit well with me so yeah look forward to my wrap up for this one now i have a gift from the lovely laura so she'll be linked in the description as well she sent me lumberjanes um volume one by noelle stevenson um and gab love people um but yeah i really don't know much about lumberjanes at all apart from the fact that jade from jd ray reads um absolutely loves these and the art style i don't read a lot of graphic novels but this it just looks so cool like i'm gonna have to try and find something now to demonstrate like it's just very very unique um yeah lumberjanes i feel like this is going to be a nice quick and easy read it is not a long graphic novel at all and as i said i don't really read graphic novels so i'm trying to get more into that and this is hopefully my first step okay 
three more we are nearly done uh the first one is a gift from the lovely chelsea let's get her instagram right it's chelsea right stories on instagram um and she sent me killing for company the case of dennis nilson by brian masters um i haven't actually watched there was a documentary about this serial killer um on tv lately and i missed it i and i haven't caught up on it but i am hoping to read the book first so if you're unaware let's just sum it up from the back of the book um, on 9th of February 1983, Dennis Nilsson was arrested at his Muswell Hill home, which is London, I believe, um, after human remains have been identified as the cause of the street's blocked drains. Within days, he is confessed to... Confessed? <laughs> oh my God, I need to stop talking. Confess, confessed to 15 gruesome murders committed over a period of four years. His victims, all young homosexual men, had never been missed. Um, so yeah, this is hopefully like the tv show has david tennant i've heard amazing things um chelsea really loved this i've actually just noticed there are pictures in here wow okay i am very excited and i have no excuse to not be picking this up very very soon i really need to i don't think i've ever read an actual true crime book about a serial killer so I'm really intrigued and I'm very excited. So thank you again, Chelsea. Um, next we have our November reposed book box. Um, and in that we got The Unpassing by Chia Chia Lin. This book sounds insanely depressing. Um, and I don't think personally it's the right time for me to read this book, but I am intrigued to pick it up in the future. Um, we've got 10 year old Gavin contracts meningitis when 10 year old Gavin contracts meningitis, he falls into a fatal coma. A week later, he wakes to find that his younger sister Ruby was infected too. She did not survive. The Unpassing explores the Alaskan wilderness and the fracture of a Taiwanese immigrant family as they attempt to heal. Like that sounds brutal. I'm choked up again talking about it, but I feel like that's gonna be very hard hitting and a very, very good read. So I was happy with this from Reposed, but I think it's going to have to sit unread for a little while. And finally, another one from the BookSwap website, and that is Crave by Tracy Wolf. I have been very, like, looking out for this, trying to get a good deal for it. So the fact I managed to get it for £3.50 off the BookSwap website is insane. Um, this book has deckled edges. It is my first experience with this deckled edges, like, makes me feel slightly sick, but we're going to ignore it. Um, so... This is about, I don't know, I don't actually know what the main character's name is. Um, it says, my whole world changed when I stepped inside the academy. Nothing is right about this place or the other students in it. Here I am a mere mortal among gods or monsters. I still can't decide which of these warring factions I belong to, if I belong to any at all. I only know that the one thing that unites them is their hatred of me. Then there's Jackson Vega, a vampire with deadly secrets who hasn't felt anything for a hundred years. But there's something about him that calls to me, something broken in him that somehow fits what's broken in me, which could spell death for us all. My only issue with this is that my, um, boyfriend's baby brother he's not a baby he's like five uh, but his name is Jackson so there is no way I'm gonna like spout this name um there is no way I'm gonna read this and not part of my head be thinking of a five-year-old and knowing where this is gonna go I need to get out of that mentality before I read this book um, but yeah very interested um I've heard a lot of people say it's like pretty bad but in a way that's self-aware and just a good time so excited so those are all the books I got in October and November. I am now going to try and take a thumbnail of these. So do wish me luck. Um, if you have read any of these books and have an opinion, please do let me know in the description. I would love to talk to you about them and it will let me know if I need to prioritise any of these on my TBR. So on that note, thank you very much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.